I think consciousness is just paying attention to what you're actually experiencing as opposed to living in your head. No. It's getting into your body and it's being here, smelling the onions, <laughs> talking to you, not worrying about the cameras, trying to sound smart or like, yeah. you know, it, it's about being right here. And when you can do that, there's a lot of power. Hello, today I am here with my friend Jenna Hermit, and today we are going to be interviewing Jenna and trying out a new series where we are going to be cooking and chatting. Jenna, thank you for being here. <laughs> this is awesome. I'm so excited. Multitasking. Yeah, totally. Cooking and chatting, chatting and cooking. <laughs> We're going to see how it goes. Hopefully I don't get too flustered. Hopefully you don't get too flustered. Well, it looks and... like you're going to do all the work. So, you know, yes. I'm just going to chill over here. <laughs> I might give you a cutting board and we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, this is the first, like, first of the series as a pilot. Uh, so yeah, thank you so, so much for So expectations are low. This. Perfect. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So, uh, to introduce you, so Jenna Herbert, she is the founder of Make It, which is now like a um, multi-city craft fair that has really like grown to amazing proportions. The author of Make It, uh, Make It Happen, an amazing book that uh, I'm about halfway through. Oh, and wow, I'm flattered. So, yeah, really enjoying that. <laughs> and you. you're also the founder of Conscious Labs, mm. which is... Um, well, you can describe a bit more about it, but you're doing It's a work in so progress. Nice. So Conscious Lab is a space here in Vancouver that we do all sorts of really cool events around mm -hmm. mindfulness, entrepreneurship. Uh, we've done breath work, vision boards, yoga, wow. just kind of whatever comes to mind. Um, yeah, so it's just basically a community center for people to come together and want to create more video content as well so that is so yeah. cool I don't know how you do it all but uh, we'll I, get I don't do that anything that well I think that's <laughs> okay. what it is I'm definitely not a perfectionist and I yeah. think that's part of it for being an entrepreneur it's knowing like where to really focus your time mm. and I think if you are a perfectionist then you can get lost in the weeds yeah. but if you're just focused on the big picture and it's also working with a team and I definitely don't do this alone I have some amazing people on my mm -hmm. team and yeah, we just slog through it. <laughs> That's amazing. So delegation is key in this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that is, it's a tough thing. It's, it's one of those skills that people can give you advice and share their own experience. But, you know, we're, we're all just these humans with different experience and different ideas. So what works for one person doesn't work for another. So I'm constantly like how... What about you for delegation? Can I ask you questions, Marlon? Yes, you can. Okay, sweet. Um, but before you ask me a question, <laughs> okay. um, do I have to start cooking? <laughs> <laughs> I can give you a cutting you board. I think yeah, uh, cut. if, if you're comfortable with that. But um, yeah, what we're making. So yeah. you don't know, but uh, <laughs> you told me that you like Thai dishes. So we were making Thai. a Thai dish. Sweet. We are making a Thai curry mm -hmm. today, and uh, we got lots of vegetables, as you can see. Yeah. So it's gonna be delicious. We got some eggplant, zucchini, garlic, uh, onions, carrots, uh, some coconut milk. We got some, um, why am I forgetting, bok choy, uh, and some uh, bamboo shoots. Nice. Yeah, so we got the works. This sounds awesome. And yeah. Thai food's relatively easy to veganize too, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, you just don't use chicken and... And, and fish sauce, but you fish sauce. Fish yes. sauce can be scary, anyways, because you add too much of that. It's, like, <laughs> it's oh, disgusting. I, I, I've learned from experience. Yeah. Or if you spill it, oh. <laughs> yeah, I've had that happen. I think Natasha, my wife, uh, spilled it all over herself one time, and it was a disaster. Oh my God. <laughs> like, she wow. was just traumatized by it. <laughs> <laughs> Wafts of fish sauce coming back to haunt you guys. Yes. <laughs> um, so. I'm gonna give you this eggplant and then we can start prepping. Oh, the prepping. eggplant. Yeah, you get the eggplant. There was no jokes made about eggplant nope, before we started. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, you can just slice this, slice this into small chunks. I'm not too worried how All you right. cut it. Um, we're gonna just get some more sizes. It always but, surprises uh, me how light an eggplant is. It's, it's like a yeah, foamy thing inside. Totally. So Jenna, mm -hmm. what was your first business? Well, I was always an entrepreneurial kid, uh, so my brother and I used to sell golf balls to golfers because we grew up on a golf course in Edmonton, and we would go into the ravine and just pick up all these you know, old golf balls that the golfers had hit in the ravine, and then we clean them up and resell them to the golfers. Oh my, that is amazing. Yeah, and then wow. we also would sell um, 
my dad's like beer and we get all of the drinks and snacks in our, our pantry because yeah. my parents like we grew up living on a golf course so we would just set up a little booth by the fence and try and my at the golf try course and, yeah yeah huh. i know that's great so i know right i don't think it was get legal get no it's selling <laughs> beer but i'm from alberta so who knows maybe maybe it was different in you know the 90s mm -hmm. <laughs> Breaking the law from your first oh, <laughs> entrepreneurial yeah. venture, nice. Yeah, and then I had um, a jewelry company called Jenna's Jewelry, and I made order forms from just typing out Jenna's Jewelry and like gluing them on a piece of paper with lots of lines to kind of hodgepodge this order sheet that I would get my dad to take to work to photocopy, and that was my order sheet. So, really? Yeah, yeah. Always hustling from a young age. I don't, I don't really know why. Like my dad was an entrepreneur, and. Okay. Um, I think that could be part of it, but just the idea of making money with your ideas was something that was always intriguing to me. Mm -hmm. Did your parents kind of inspire you or like teach you the practices of being an entrepreneur? <laughs> like well, your dad's telling a... you to sell his beer? <laughs> <laughs> no, my dad definitely did not tell us to sell okay. his beer. And I think we sold it for a dollar a can. So we we're definitely undercutting okay. <laughs> and not making much of a profit oh, really? margin. Uh, but I, they, they did to an extent. I took a course when I was in school called Junior Achievement. Mm -hmm. So that's where um, kids are taught entrepreneurship from this organization. So okay. I had that. I also took Toastmasters as a kid. Really? Yeah, like in grade six. That was something that you were inspired to do? No, I think my parents forced me to. Okay. <laughs> Wow. Like, what kind of kid wants to learn how to public speak? I don't think it, <laughs> right. it's probably not like a cool thing, but I mean... But so I, valuable as a kid to learn It is valuable. Speak? Yeah, I, I recognize that now. But yeah, I wasn't a cool kid. I actually used to wear headgear. Okay, and automatically you're not the cool kid when you wear headgear. And this headgear went around my whole head. Oh my God. And I had a mouthpiece, so I couldn't actually speak with it on. Yeah. But I wore it to school. <laughs> That is, it's just like, how can the dental industry like do they that? They don't even kids? make it anymore because now I have some shifting. Well, okay. I don't want to point this out, but I have one <laughs> tooth that's shifting. So I'm looking to get Invisalign. Oh, yeah. And I mentioned to my dentist that I had headgear. And she's like, oh, they don't even do that to kids anymore. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's traumatizing <laughs> for kids, I feel like. Yeah. But you know what? It's all those things that kind of shape you into who you are that's true and... okay so next part of the cooking is we're gonna actually cook <laughs> <laughs> yeah nice okay so uh i'm gonna get some stuff into this is really loud into the pan and then we're just gonna make it happen <laughs> oh i see what you did there <laughs> very clever cool yeah um jenna if you could go back in time to teach yourself something what do you think that would be Ooh, the big questions <laughs> I would say that being different is actually a really good thing. And mm. I think because I was an entrepreneur at such a young age and I didn't really have experience of working for someone else, I used to take that, I, I used to be insecure about that because mm -hmm. I thought, oh, I don't really know what I'm doing. But I realized I did know what I was doing. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. So just to trust myself more I think is a big thing mm -hmm. because confidence is everything in entrepreneurship like it doesn't right. matter what you're making what you're doing it does to a certain point but it's all about the confidence that you have yeah I can imagine both like I was at first I was thinking um, first for selling to be able to like go into a store mm -hmm. and be able to s sell your product yeah but also in decision making like that's something I'm learning uh, like how important it is to actually make a decision like you don't have to have all of the information but just having yeah. enough information because I like for myself I can get bogged down by by not making a choice like mm -hmm. we're going through an interview process for my own company right now yeah. and it's like I've had a lot of um, just taking longer than I should be for making a decision yeah. where it's like more important to actually make a decision mm -hmm. than like be indecisive about it and like yeah. spend more time yeah. and make wrong decisions but we as entrepreneurs I think we're so obsessive about being right and doing the right thing mm -hmm. But what the contradiction of that whole thing is, there is no right thing because it hasn't been done before. Right. So that can be really scary. Um, yeah, when you are entering, especially something like Conscious Lab, I've now had this space for two and a half years and even I was able to get the name across social media and the website because I guess no one had put those words together. I mean, they had, yeah. there are Conscious Lab. I'm not the first one to ever do that, but like the idea was pretty, progressive but um 
I was just in Los Angeles and there's a lot of things kind of like that. Okay. And it's actually really cool. And it, even in Vancouver, there's a lot of really amazing spaces that are doing similar things. Yeah. So proof of concept is always very, you know, it's, it's very important when you are starting a business. But when you look at some of the innovators that we've seen over the years, like some of them just come up with these ideas that no one's come up with before. And yeah, it can be scary. What does that mean to you being like conscious or the idea of conscious labs? Like, what does that mean to you? I think consciousness is just paying attention to what you're actually experiencing as opposed to living in your head. Yeah. It's getting into your body and it's being here, smelling the onions, <laughs> talking to you, not worrying about the cameras, trying to sound smart or like, yeah. you know, it, it's about being right here. And when you can do that, there's a lot of power because there's a sense of, of calming um, that happens when you can just be in your body. When you're present. When you're present. And I think it's one of those things, like the more you go down the rabbit hole of what that means, the more you, you do understand what that feels like. Right. And with meditation, like sometimes I, I think like, oh, is this actually doing anything? Like I just get frustrated. But then you realize like the more you do anything, it just, you're developing a skill. Mm -hmm. um, and what, uh, what skills do you use uh, in, in developing consciousness or what practices do you do in developing consciousness, I should say? Uh, I do, for meditation, I do something called Transcendental Meditation oh, yeah. or TM. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a cool. TM guy? Uh, I am not because I've never done the course, yeah. but I guess I've done similar practices to it. But uh, I'm a Headspace guy. Oh, like I app. love Headspace. I actually I did Headspace this morning. It's did you? Great. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Are you a paying subscriber? No, I'm a, I, I'm cheap. I don't have the, but I'm gonna get it. I know it's. I have so many subscriptions to so many things. But yeah, Same. Headspace I think will be a good one. I, I do. I love his story too of how he started the business. It's really oh, quite interesting. Yeah, actually, two guys and one is a a monk and just you know white guy who just had enough of the Western world and went to go live in Asia and became a monk. Really? Yeah. Ah, that's super fascinating. Yeah, and also breath work. Um, Conscious Lab has been used for breath work okay. for quite some time. And I, I just it's amazing how that power of breath can really be transformational, too. Yeah, I've done a few practices now. And what well, did you we, just we've sneak done in it there? together. Do okay, you have so, to tell people what yes, you're doing? <laughs> yes, we got, uh, we got some onions in here. We got some shallots. And then we have a green curry paste. Ooh. So we're, we're a bit cheating here, but um, a paste makes more so much more sense yeah. than like trying to go like blend up ginger and gallon gal and um and garlic i mean we got similar flavors in here but um nice. yeah curry paste makes it really easy oh yeah uh, nice is that yeah. easy to find yeah uh, i just get it at your local asian grocery store nice yeah um are you doing any other practices um i do a lot of yoga okay i would say yoga makes up like 80% of my fitness. Oh, really? I go to yoga about five times a week. Okay. Yeah, I just find it's just, it kind of does, it's two birds with one stone. It's, it's, I'm a maximizer for strength finders tests. So I feel like <laughs> yoga really brings you into your body. And yeah. if you do a lot of like hot power yoga, you can get pretty buff too. <laughs> oh, totally. I, I feel like yoga is a form of meditation. It's like a moving meditation. Totally. Um, I don't go to a lot of yoga classes, but I do uh, yoga with Adrienne. Have you heard of that? No. Um, she's a YouTuber and she basically, I sit in front of my TV and do, do yoga. I've never um, tried that. I can say to my Google device, it's like, uh, we call it, Goo, we call her Gugu. So I'll be like, hey Gugu, put on yoga with Adrienne. And then in Gugu. like two minutes, I got yoga in front of me. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. So yeah. no excuses. Yeah, exactly. Uh, super, um, relevant question to what we were just talking about okay uh if you could have a superpower what would that be <laughs> oh man <laughs> uh <coughs> i just touched the mic <laughs> <laughs> i was coughing though it was a knee-jerk reaction <coughs> if i could have a superpower mm, it would be to be able to make the connection of like ideas in my head to reality faster. I don't know what that's called. A make it happen superpower. Yeah. 
Because sometimes <laughs> I have so many ideas and there's so many things I know will work. Like I've just done so many entrepreneurial things throughout my life. And with Conscious Lab, there's so much potential and I see it and I, I it frustrates me a lot because I just want to make stuff happen really fast. Right. And then there's like all this other stuff that comes in the way and like there's personal resistance. So maybe it would be not to have that like inner resistance. Okay. Just like more confidence and more ability. But then it's also the humanness of it all. I, I wish I just had a better, yeah. To be invisible. No. To be invisible? <laughs> no, I mean that. That's, it's, it's a very entrepreneurial uh, answer to, <laughs> to be able to execute faster. But I get it because like that's how you can make the world a better place or, or yeah. execute on your mission, not be like stagnating on what you want to do because you have a lot of ideas of things that you want uh -huh. to put out into the world. Yeah. And there's only so much time. Um, what would yours be? You know, I've actually answered this question in a similar route of, of being able to like execute on my ideas faster. So that it's funny that you say that. <laughs> We're such um, nerds, hey? Like, <laughs> yeah. Flying would be pretty rad too. Flying would be pretty rad because uh, nobody else flies. So. But then maybe you would feel like a freak because you're flying around and none of your friends could fly. Like you're just flying alone with the birds. Like I don't know. That'd still be pretty. <laughs> I mean, depends how strong my flying abilities were. Because if I could carry someone with me, that'd be. That'd be pretty cool. You could but. be like Superman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, or Aladdin. <laughs> Something like Aladdin, magic carpet. I can show you the world. Uh -oh, watch out for copyright issues. Um, so in being practical then, what would you say are your super skills in being able to make it happen faster? Like what have you learned for being able to actually execute on things? Like what are those key factors? Uh, well, I'm definitely not very organized. <laughs> So I rely on other people to be organized. So mm -hmm. I would say one of my superpowers is getting people really excited about an idea oh. and getting people's buy-in and getting people pumped. And that's how I'm able to, to produce Make It because I am really excited about it and I feel like that transcends. And even at the show, I, I went to go see Tony Robbins about four years ago. Yeah. So I had the idea of, to do, of doing a pump-up speech. And at the time, my younger brother was my business partner. And he's like, don't go too far. Like, don't <laughs> yeah. creep him out. So I, I just grabbed the mic because we'd always like say good morning. But I went like full Tony for about three minutes. Yeah. And now it's something that we're known for. Like really? my pump up speech. And, and I've trained other people on my team to be able to do it too. Because I don't want to always do the opening. Yeah. But now I do it on the, the day one of the show and okay. the final thing. So. I do really like to get people excited, and I think with Conscious Lab too, like I'm so excited about the space, and sometimes I don't know what I'm doing with it, but I'm excited about it, and then other people come and they're excited too. Huh. Yeah. That's great. No um, measuring the rice, Marlon? What are you, freestyling? I'm freestyling, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, just add a bit of water, add a bit of rice, rinse it, uh, <laughs> and then I'll either overcook it or undercook it. <laughs> oh my God, living on the no. edge. I feel like it's a... Somewhat ingrained, but um, yeah, I'll do it. You've probably made a lot of rice in your life. I'm not great at making rice because I don't measure, but uh, measuring just takes too much time and wastes too much dishes. <laughs> wastes too much time. Yeah. We have all of the stuff in mm -hmm. uh, the pan except for the bamboo shoots and the coconut cream. I got all some right. rice cooking, so we're going to be eating here in... Uh, oh, 15, 20 minutes. We actually get to eat the food too? Yeah, I know. Wow. Surprise. Yeah. Surprise. Brian, are you excited? I'm <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Can you imagine if, if, if the, the cookie at the end, you're like, okay, this is, this is for us for dinner tonight. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are my leftovers. <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you meal plan? Uh, I make a lot so that there's always leftovers. Yeah, I, I don't really meal plan. Um, I probably could at times, but generally when we cook, we just try and make, you know, have big pans. And, and that's the secret to saving money too and time and cooking is just have a big pan so you have lots of surface area yeah. and make enough for leftovers. Nice. Yeah, because it's always easy just to add a couple more veggies or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, what do you think is the biggest thing preventing people from making it happen? Self-doubt. Self-doubt. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think that's all it really is. Yeah. I think it's um, equally fear of failure and fear of success. 
when I was writing oh. my book, I think it was probably procrastination, but I was doing a lot of posting on Facebook just when I had an idea. Because when you're writing a book, you're spending so much time on your own. Yeah. It can be very, very lonely. And you feel like you're going insane at times because you're just alone with your thoughts and doing research. And right. so I would reach out on Facebook. And one of the posts I did was what really is holding people back from you know, making their dreams happen. Yeah. And it was fascinating because there was equal parts fear of failure and fear of success. So when you think about that, it's, it's co contradictory, like it's an oxymoron, mm -hmm. because how can you be fearful of opposite things? But I think it's, it comes down to like fear of the unknown, because look at the yeah. show. Maybe this, Marlon, this is our big break. And yeah. this gets millions and millions <laughs> of views. And I, I just started watching the morning show last night. Okay. And it's just interesting how, have you seen it? Uh, no, I haven't yet. It's on Apple TV, and yeah. it's actually it's an Jennifer interesting Jennifer Aniston. And yeah, yeah, Steve Carell, um, yeah. yeah, Reese Witherspoon, and there's a viral video that launches this woman's career, and you just never know. And I think people are just, it's not trusting that you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And even sometimes when I, whoops, <laughs> when I have a lot going on, it's like, will I be, be able to handle this when it's an unfamiliar situation? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, the, the fear of success, it almost feels like an excuse, but I think you're right. I think it is the fear of unknown yeah. and fear of taking a leap, like yeah. fear of not being stable. Oh, 100%. Like, and when you think about now with social media and we've seen so many people who, you know, get misinterpreted or like people, I think people are also really afraid of not being understood mm. and because we can attack people so quickly now, I think yeah. that makes people even more fearful of putting themselves out there. Mm -hmm. Have you experienced that where you put yourself out there and you've had like negative reactions? Um, I don't think I'm big enough yet, but yeah, certainly like with Make It sometimes. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, I, I used to blog regularly and sometimes I would get comments that didn't feel good or people would just write mean things. But what you have to learn really quickly when you put yourself out there is it speaks more about them than it does of you. And I, I feel like this troll, like the whole idea of being a troll and just saying whatever you want, like people are starting to see what motivates that more. So it's yeah. less scary. Hmm. Yeah, I've definitely got a lot of, oh, spicy, <laughs> a lot of chili, <laughs> a lot of comments uh, that go both ways, but like, yeah, people, they can definitely say like ridiculous things on my YouTube channel. <laughs> I like and, that. Um, I don't take it to heart, like because no. you got to think it's 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 not about like what they're saying to you. It's it's more about them and what they're going through. Like this, totally. it's their own insecurities, and I yeah. mostly like feel for those people. Oh yeah, you can only have going through something. Yeah, because if if you are you know, making shit happen and living an awesome life. You're not trolling the internet at night writing <laughs> yeah. comments. Like, totally. Anyways, I think it's all just, you just have to have your own integrity and check in with yourself and have good people around you, good friends and family, and yeah, just have fun with it all. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, what is next for you? <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm also interested in creating video because I feel like, there's a lot of learn through my own experience of running booty belts. Well, no, selling golf balls to golfers, yeah. uh, selling jewelry, uh, booty belts, and, and make it, and now with Conscious Labs. So I really want to give back because I remember myself starting out on this entrepreneurial journey, and there wasn't a lot of resources. And mm -hmm. I learned so many things just by doing. And I feel like now younger people are more open to doing their own thing, and we have mm -hmm. so many resources. So giving back by sharing my own insight and also interviewing more people. Right, yeah. and you've already created this book that helps people and <laughs> figuring out how to make it happen. Yeah. How did yeah. you go about, was this all um, taking it from your own life, or did you have a research process to kind of come up with these things of what are the key things of making it happen? Yeah, I did that? a lot of research. I definitely went down many rabbit holes about yeah. goal fulfillment, manifestation, watched a lot of videos, read a lot of things, but then you have to have that 
balance of it also can be procrastination because yeah. <laughs> there are so many rabbit holes you can go down with writing a book about this topic. Uh, so a lot of it's just based on my own experience. And another thing about writing a book is you evolve and change as a, as a person. Oh. So there were things like it was a two year process from when I started to when it came out. So I also really evolved. So reading the manuscript, I, I would constantly want to change, but it was my editor and the agency I worked with that yeah. was like, no, Jenna, that's for another book, like these new ideas. Oh, okay. Um, so I haven't started another book, but I have lots of ideas. Um, cool. It's just, it's a very time consuming process. Yeah, two years? That's, that's it's a lot. lot. And I'm glad, like, I wrote the, the first one entirely on my own, but maybe for mm. the next one, I'll get a ghostwriter or some help. Yeah. Because I've realized now it's all about it's your ideas, but you don't necessarily have to type each word. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just a way to, to scale and. I don't know, get more books out faster. Yeah, well, you can also do it, well, I guess ghostwriter, but also having, where you're just speaking to um, to your ghostwriter, is that how it's generally done? I think so. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of ways to do it, but I didn't really know that until I started to do it, and I, I know now there's a lot of ways, but I also think video is a great way to get ideas out really quickly. Totally, and get validation on what like topics people are interested in. I mean, yeah. just as, as blogging is, because totally. uh, you're already writing the content. So a lot of authors, I think, do that, or seeing what, what connects with people. Totally. And sometimes it's unexpected. You don't know what's going to be the big hit. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, what do you think are the most fundamental elements of making, making something happen? Like we talked about what, uh, why people don't, but <coughs> what do you think if, if people have a, an idea or maybe they've like just started but aren't really going anywhere? What do you think are those like fundamental things? Clarity. Clarity. Commitment. Mm. Having a plan. I think it's the balance between, we were chatting about this earlier, Marlon, yep. about it's like going on vacation. Like, do you want to have every day structured and planned or do you want to have some of it planned? I think when you have a big <coughs> idea, having some structure is really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. Like that will change and evolve, but having a course of action and just writing it down and committing to it. I also think having more people involved is a good thing. Okay. Uh, like for writing my book, I worked with a publisher and I had a production manager. Like there was a lot of people oh, really? involved in this. I don't think I would have done it otherwise. Because I know I would. Because it keeps you accountable? It keeps me accountable and mm. make it when you think about it too. It's not like we can just decide, like if I feel lazy, like oh, I don't want to do a show this year. Right. Because we have hundreds and hundreds of artists and makers that rely on Make It as a platform right. to sell what they make. Totally. So if you can build in accountability, I think that's really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. And just knowing yourself, like I, I'm not a detail person, but I have, I can really see the big picture very clearly. Yeah. So it's finding people to either partner with or work with that are able to do the things and can compensate for what you're not good at. Huh. Wow. Do you feel like you need to be doing like one thing at a time? Like, cause it seems like you have lots going on. So like, is it that you can kind of get one thing done and have a team in place, the, mm -hmm. some people that you're working with? Right. Or uh, would you recommend someone like try multiple things and test it out? Because there's different methodologies of thinking about that. I, I think at first it's best to just have one thing. And even with like make it in Conscious Lab, and I think that's why even with Conscious Lab, I haven't put as much effort or energy as I would have liked because I still have make it. Yeah. That takes up a lot of my bandwidth. Uh, but I'm very passionate about Conscious Lab, so now mm -hmm. I'm making the choice to to step more away from Make It and have a team in place. Yeah. And my fiance Orson is also involved with Make It, so I'm really grateful for that because mm -hmm. it's it's hard bringing people on board that care as much right. as you do. I would say arguably it's impossible to find someone that cares as much, but right. there are people who care a lot, and mm -hmm. there's people who are motivated by the idea. Because as a business grows, it's less about the entrepreneur and more about the movement and the impact that you can create from the business. Hmm. What's the impact that you're really trying to create for people? I know what it felt like when I was young and was selling my booty belts and the first time I started to make some money and like, whoa, I could run this thing and not have a job yeah. and do what I love and to travel. There's a lot of freedom and autonomy that comes with entrepreneurship, which I really feel is so important in living mm -hmm. a good life. So I want to be able to have to really help more people to be able to do that. Oh, that's so fascinating. And yeah. the world's kind of moving that way. Like the internet's oh, yeah. allowed anyone to be a freelancer and that's definitely the way people are, are, are shifting for time. We are ready to eat. So uh, we got our food cooked, we got the rice done and chop up some Thai basil for garnish. But uh, yeah. Let's get into it. Um, Jenna, question. 
Yeah. If you could meet anyone in the world, uh, who would you meet and why? Well, Oprah. Oprah, okay. <laughs> For obvious reason. I just don't think there's anyone like her. Hmm. And I think she's someone where in a hundred years, 500 years, like she's just made such a positive impact on the world. And I've seen her live actually a couple times. Oh really? Like at her show or TV show? No, just when she's, she's done stadium shows. Like she's come oh. to Vancouver twice at Rogers. And then I also went to an event she put on in Seattle at Keys Arena. So these are huge venues. And it's remarkable to see somebody, like when you think, about production value like she can just be on a stage with nothing else and have such presence to fill up a room where there's 20,000 people right. I just think she has so much w wisdom like I'd be so awkward and so nervous and probably just like be sweaty and slurry and just <laughs> yeah. a mess but I just think yeah to be able to meet Oprah would be a dream come true what would you ask her oh god I don't think I could uh. even speak but <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would yeah, like just how she's been able to do it all. Because mm. I don't think there's many humans who've come from where she's come. Like her, her life is just, it's insane what she's been able to accomplish. Yeah. So maybe what she tells herself. Oh, interesting. Yeah, her what voice in her head. Like what's her tape? Huh. <laughs> uh, on that note, what's, what's your tape then? I really like to remind myself not to take things seriously. Like okay. sometimes, because make it, all the things I do are just happy accidents. I haven't really, because I started my, my business journey at such a young age, Yeah. I never thought booty belts was going to be, you know, I, it was low risk because I was so young, yeah. and I find as business gets bigger and you get more people involved, I've had some consultants I've brought in and they tell you all this stuff, and you know, sometimes that can bring in a lot of fear as well. Oh, interesting. So with my tape, I just try and remember like what's the life I want to have, and I think a lot of times like we see all these these tech companies that are scale, like scale, 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 like 10 extra business and all this yeah. stuff. But I really think having a lifestyle business where you get to do what you love and not work all the time is actually a beautiful thing. So reminding myself that it's all up to me and like everything I do, and is this what I wanna do? Am I on course for the life that feels good for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, You're designing your life. Yeah, because if you don't, someone else will, and <laughs> you might not totally. like what they come up with. So Exactly. Um, what do you, how do you go about doing that? Is it uh, you write your goals at the beginning of the year? Is it that you regularly reflect? Are you doing ayahuasca trips? Uh, <laughs> how do you go about doing that? Well, I've never done ayahuasca. Not I'm yet. scared, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I hear such mixed things. Yeah. But I feel like with breath work, there's ways to get to that state in a more mm. natural way. Yeah. Not to say I'll never do it, but... Uh, I feel like it's just kind of day by day and there's it's a balance between creating structure and routine for yourself because I definitely can be lazy and procrastinate and I know that might come as a surprise because outwardly it looks like I'm achieving a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a quick start so there's um, the Colby test that you can okay. do from one to nine. I'm actually a nine for quick start so if I have an idea I just do it mm -hmm. and there's pros and cons to that because I don't always give myself enough time to plan or do it properly. Mm -hmm. And I can run into that trap of like, okay, I tried, I'm not going to do it. Right. Um, but yeah, it's just listening in and taking things day by day. Okay. I don't know. Being, being silly, having fun. Yeah. Like I feel like that's my natural state. And I have some friends <laughs> who are ridiculous. So when I'm feeling like I'm being too, I don't know, too uptight, I just hang out with my crazy friends. <laughs> okay, just, there you go. Yeah. Are they the people that, dumb stuff. that inspire you? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to hang out with people. Who, well, I mean, it's a thing. It's like, I, I think you you want to hang out with people who are like you, but also people who are different. Um, but I, I would say everyone I, I I choose to spend time with like does have a positive outlook on life and yeah. are generally doing exciting things. Oh, this looks so good. No guarantees. No guarantees. <laughs> hey, I thought you were professional. Yeah. Well, <laughs> professional home cook, not professional oh, chef. Okay. All right. <laughs> professional youtube chef yeah a professional youtube chef yeah. is that is that like an instagram model like would you still be a model if there's no instagram is that uh, like, would you still be a yes. chef if there's no youtube <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's <funny>. exactly <laughs> okay well it smells great my stomach's growling at me so it's good time yeah i know i came hungry too i only ate one of my muffins this morning <laughs> mm -mm -mm. 
and it looks very like very healthy. Definitely very healthy. Yeah. What's your favorite dish to cook? You know, I like eating a lot more than I like making food. <laughs> so you <laughs> just make it because you like eating it more yeah. so than like the, and, the joy of cooking? Yeah, and to get nutrients. I definitely like like the meditation aspect of, of cooking. or uh, But I find I enjoy cooking more when uh, I'm sharing a meal with someone or someone else gets to appreciate it and it's oh, not yeah. just me. Cooking for yourself sucks. Yeah. It's, it's not the same. Like, I'll, I'll cook really quick meals, unless I'm trying to make leftovers or feed Natasha. But if I'm just, like, cooking a quick meal for myself, it's I'll go pretty quick and easy nice. with it. Or just have, like, peanut butter on, <laughs> on bread. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I love lime on food. Hmm. Okay, time for a taste test. Yeah. Like I said no guarantees is good, but uh, gonna you know, lime it up. Yep. Yeah. Simple home cooked meal. That didn't take very long. Eh? No. Yeah. No. All right. Let's try some eggplant since I was the one that you Oh it. yeah. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Wow. Yeah. Woo. Definitely hits you in the back of the throat. Oh, yeah, the chili. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Put some hair in your chest. Right. <laughs> Just what us ladies want hair <laughs> on our chest. <laughs> yeah, no, the flavors are great though. Mm. Very good. Yeah, no, I'm inspired to, to cook something like this at home because really it's just chopping and then the paste does a lot of the work. Totally. That's why I want to start with something easy. Um, yeah. And you can definitely make the paste from scratch and I've done it, but mm -hmm. it's so easy when it's like oh, yeah. already prepped and you can still add those ingredients. Like we still added ginger and garlic and yeah. shallot, which are part of the ingredients nice. in the paste. So, well, Jen, thank you so much for being a great guest. Oh, thank you. I it appreciate it. Um, where can people learn more about you? Yeah. Uh, well, definitely come out to the Make It Show. So if you go to makeitshow.ca, you can mm -hmm. find the information for the upcoming show. Um, check out consciouslab.ca and yeah, also on Instagram. Jenna Herbert, uh, you can buy my book on Amazon and select mm -hmm. bookstores. I'm not sure which ones still have it, but uh, yeah, I always love to connect with people. Cool. Definitely go do that, and we'll put the links down in the description. But thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. But bye for now. <laughs>